Welcome to another episode of First Step, where we get industry professionals, leaders in their field, to share with us the steps they took to get them to where they are today. And with us, we have a guest, a man who has um, garnered a, a wealth of experience in media, um, I guess motivational speaking, you know, being a voiceover talent, and now he has transitioned into the realm of politics. We have with us the one and only Mr. Jason Williams. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, all is well, man. All is well. Give thanks, you know, and, and great to be on uh, the, 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 the Zoom meeting and yeah. the energy here, you know? No, I really appreciate it. I really know. I know I'm well, coming out of um, the little season that you was, you know, very occupied with, which was the election season. I know you're kind of probably, you know, moving into the other realm and all that. So, I really appreciate him making the time, honestly, really do. So, anytime, anytime. So, Jason, I really want to get an idea of, um, of yourself as in your personality before we go, I guess, back into how you got into media and, and those things. But you, you think you have any, like, boy, superpower that you have above the average man in terms of getting things done? Um, mm -hmm. Not really, you know, I think I'm just... I've always been very brave. I've always been one to to step out and step step up, you know. Um, in a classroom, I remember in class, the teacher would ask a question and everybody would be mute. And I'd be the one to put up my hand to try it and, uh, and attempt to answer. Um, the answer might be wrong, but I would still try to make an attempt and engage. You know, I don't like silence. I don't like non-action. I don't like inactivity. Right. So I'm one that ever since I was small, I was very active. I never grew up around um, like indoor stuff, like playing cards and um, board games. I would play board games with my cousins and stuff, but I'd be bored and I'd run outside to, to either kick ball or... <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, you know, I, I was always an action person. So right. I like to be around activity and action and excitement and movement. Right. Yeah. Because, I mean, I would have played... Um Believe it or not, you probably wouldn't know because this is our first, I guess, formal interaction, right? I would have been initially um, exposed to you in studio um, years ago by Jandre when he was still in Trinidad. And um, you know that mm -hmm. you, were, you were, I think, on um, either on Red 96.7. Could have been, yeah. I think it would have been on Red at the time. And um, you were very gracious, very humble, you know, very down to earth. And... Um, I guess that is one of the strengths that I think would have lent to your success. What do you think? I want, to get, I want you to give me an idea of um, what got you into to media in the first place, you know, and then um, what your personality kind of helped to, 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 to spearhead the whole movement into um, your initial career. For me, it was have been um, really again from in school being brave. Um, a teacher called Miss Hadid was able to spot, you know, the potential, and she kind of pushed me in the direction of public speaking. Anytime the school had to go out to be, you know, if the school was invited to a debate or something, I would be the person to represent my school, um, Belmont Secondary, which is now St. Francis College, and from there it really started, you know, and. I kind of got my foot wet, feet wet, by hosting the different little talent shows in school, hosting the different achievement days. Um, and then pursuing the course. My mom would have paid for me to do the course after um, Percy Parker, IBC in Belmont. And from there, would have met up with different professionals in the game. And I basically just asked, you know, to go in and observe and, and see what, a real working studio, real work environment is like, and they invited me. I got the invitation to go in and went and saw the setup. And basically, I'm from there is where it started, you know, in terms of going, observing, and then being keeping my ears close to the ground. So, when an opportunity presented itself at the station, which was 98.9 at the time, right. I was able to fall in on the, on the overnight. And that's when my career started back in 1998, doing the overnights on 98.9. Wow. So, so at that time, you would have been fresh out of um, secondary school? Yeah, fresh out of A-levels. I, right. I did my last exam on Tuesday. I was home the Wednesday, and by the Thursday, I was actually working on radio. So I was home for one day. 
Yeah. Um, one thing I always, um, I mean, in, the good thing with, with being a public figure, I suppose, people kind of get an idea of you, right? Because you would have times where you would share um, a bit of yourself now, like on air and all of that. And um, yes. realizing you coming from, from, from country, from Erin, where, right, where you live with your mom. Yeah. Um, you think you, you, you ever saw yourself at a disadvantage in, in terms of, of accomplishing anything or being positioned now to do so well in media? Mm, only now as I get older, I get to recognize that obviously being in a rural part of the country, any country, you know, even in the mighty U.S., folks who live in rural U.S.A. would also uh, speak to lack of opportunities or limited opportunities. Um, but at the time growing up, it was such a happy time, such a loving time that, you know, my mind didn't really uh, go in that particular direction. Only as I got older, I was able to recognize that if we would have stayed on that side, the opportunities might have been in the realm of oil and gas, um, which a lot of people in the South, you know, they end up in the oil and gas field. Um, or just farming or um, fishing. Fishing. Uh, I came from a fishing village. I mean, that would have been a, a viable option to, to become a fisherman farmer probably open a small business right, right. but the, the the media scenario would not have happened if i'd stay down there i had to really leave and come up in town because that's where the media houses would have been located when i started i mean only now you have stations like uh WAC that service the southland and right right you have stations like um i think it's it's, it's Papa fm or something Papa like Papa fm i think that's in coover okay. So it can expand now in terms of the amount of radio stations and options. But back then, to really pursue media, you had to be close to the city or at least some proximity to the city centre. Right. So you could at least be in the space to learn and to work if given the opportunity. Right. Because I find um, you mm-hmm. find a lot of times you always think my tongue is where the action is. And, and then guys who would have been going to school in Port of Spain you find a lot of them now kind of cornering media in terms of they are kind of like the, the who's who then, um, yeah. generally in, in media. So for somebody coming out of that circle then, guys who probably yeah. would have gone to school in the QRC or the... Uh, well, you went to Belmont, which is, yeah. which is I guess, I suppose might have, might have helped. I don't know, you know? But well, Belmont actually funny enough, eh? um... I think there's something special about Belmont around the era I went and even after. Because when you look at the amount of uh, personalities that actually currently or would have been part of media, so we look at the stalwarts like uh, Edison Carr, you look at Jimmy Thomas, who is big in the gospel world, you look at the likes of uh, Black Coffee, that's number three, and I'll call there, right? So you look at well, myself, um, Rodney Fireball King, you know, Hollywood Sachi. Yeah. Uh, DJ Dwayne, Selector Miles, mm. Kevin Lynx, Akhenaten Simmons, that's 10. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, S. Carter. Wow. You know, uh, the list goes on and on. So that's about 11 men, and I'm sure there are more, you know. I, 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 I apologize if I missed anybody out at all. Uh, Ishmali, he works on Red 967 FM also. Um, so Belmont would have produced a lot of media personalities, a lot of presenters, a lot of men who currently have careers and actually on air wow. you know it's, it's unique i think it's the only school in town that really would have produced so many well yeah and and that's the thing um i guess socially you you it, it had to i guess be a bit connected to the urban vibe and, and what's happening i guess to be a bit hip as well but um jason how 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 were you able to move from i guess radio then into presenting physically you know for tv and and those things in terms of then going on to host um different shows you went on to synergy yeah the shows there and all that how was that transition for you in terms of maneuvering from the two um skills well the funny thing is the transition actually went the other way around i actually would have done a radio course in 1997 with the intention of doing of course radio Right. And I got the opportunity to do television. So my introduction actually into media would have actually been via TV. You know? So oh, TV, funny right. enough, right. is, I would say, I would say the first love, but it's definitely my intro. That was the medium 
which um, on where I started. So I did party time back in 1997. Right. And after I did party time, I started radio back in, well, 1998, the year after. And I did radio for some years, and then I was able to transition again into television, which to me at the point in time was a bit easier because I remember going through the pieces and going through the early challenge of it when I started my career. So I actually started, funny enough, a lot of people, and that's a good question, a lot of people don't even realize that I actually started on television before I did radio. Yeah. So going back to television um, is always something very natural, very easy for me. I was able to learn under some of the best in the business, mm -hmm. see some of the stalwarts at work, uh, people like deceased Alison Hennessy, you know, you look at the likes of uh, Hans Lea Judah, these are Stole what people want, Al Constantine, right, right. Um, Uncle Holly, Auntie Hazel. These were the folks I was actually able to watch and observe their craft. So I've, I'm able to, funny enough, uh, strike a balance between that established old school, you know, main, mainstay uh, style of presenting, right, and be a little bit, you know, new age, modern, a bit, you know, spontaneous. Right. So I kind of have the best of both worlds because I was able to observe and learn from some of those veterans when I started off my career at a very young age. Yeah, and, and the thing is, you, you could have always, I guess based on your, 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 your approach to things, it would be always with a, a strong measure of professionalism because I would have observed your interview. I remember you interviewed um, the deceased um, Patrick Manning, I think, on Synergy. I might be mistaken. <laughs> yeah, you, you did. You interviewed him as well as... Um, Basdio Pande. Yeah, yeah. And at the point in time, I don't think any he granted an interview to anybody else. So for me, um, I had to dig deep, you know, do my research, make sure I was very professional. And it was one of the highlights of my career uh, doing that interview at the point in time with deceased uh, Prime well, deceased Patrick Manning, former Prime Minister. Yeah, and and the and the one reason because I would have been, I guess we would have been a lot younger that time. And the one reason I actually decided to look at the interview would have been the fact that you, somebody, I guess a contemporary, was doing it, somebody I could identify with now, somebody being on yeah. urban radio, being on a, yeah. well, urban TV, you know, yeah. and, and, and you were still able to, I guess, hold it down now. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, man. Some great, great challenges, some great moments over the years, ups, downs, but I've you know, held steadfast to, to my craft and to what I love. And um, it's always been part of me, no matter what I do. Even doing the soca, even recently within the political space. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody could ever say they would have seen a different JW. It was always from that experience and time in media. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been able to pull from that and know how to present and how to project and how to really bring forward the message. Because the message is important and how you transmit the message. And I realized that, you know, you have to be able to, one, read your audience, understand yourself, and, and stay authentic. And people, I believe, in Trinidad, they tend to respond to authenticity, you know, when you're coming forward and being genuine. I think they're able to, to sift out yeah, what, yeah. Is, what is, um, you what know, real from unreal. Not so real, yeah. 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 But, um, I want to find out a bit about influences on, on your person now in terms of personality and um, then into your, your, your profession. Um, who would have been one of the more influential, influential people on you and what kind of lessons they would have shared to you directly or indirectly that you probably just pick up, you know, from yeah. unconscious observing then? First to begin with, uh, my mom, for sure. Um, you know, very strong woman and, you know, one of my biggest critics and she keeps it real with me. Um, I mean, it's not a mama's boy thing, but the reality is that I would have seen her effort and see how hard she sacrificed to ensure that we were able to get access to education and just the different amenities to get us through now. Mm. And I never wanted to, I never will bring no shame to her eyes and I try to always you know, make her proud and, and, uh, and uh, seek her interest. You know, even as a big man now, I will seek her interest and make sure she all right. You know, when she all right, all right. Right. I would have to also consider people like uh, my Uncle Dave, 
you know, lots of family, really, yeah? family, you know, Uncle Dave, a great influence to my life. Um, he would have been while you were down in South. Yeah, and, yeah, and he's a man, you know, I mean, he has been consistent in my whole life, always supporting me from baby to now. He will always come and just check on me, make sure I write, you know, he's just a constant force, constant force of strength and love. Um, I'll consider people like any business. Uh, Lisa Wickham, you know, a great, great Im Im influence to me as somebody I could always reach out to and, and get a word of advice if I'm confused about something. She saw the potential in me when I didn't even see it in myself and gave me a chance to do E-Zone back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, so Lisa Wickham is definitely one that I admire and look up to a lot. Um, I'll have to give Wendell a nice little mention to you know, Wendell Naipo. Yeah, so uh, people like Wendell, Lisa, Uncle Dave, uh, my mom, uh, you know, uh, Uncle Desmond Wait. They have different people, Uncle Lester Ford, you know, they have different people who would have always been around in my life, my Uncle Carlos, my godfather. I think, I think, when, I think the key is that what I realized, mommy would have exposed me to very impactful and positive and, and, and successful people now within their fields now. Right. And when you have that kind of people, when you have that kind of support system and those kind of people looking out for you, you want to be of your best. You want to do your best. You don't want to really drop the ball now. And it's not like the pressure in you to, 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 to be something else, you know. Right. It's just understood that, you know what, it are people that look out for me and I don't really want to disappoint them. But I think a lot of times with a lot of what I'm seeing going on in the country, people have no role models now. Nobody to really mm. hold them accountable. Nobody that will really feel disappointed because everybody about everybody around them kind of come like a disappointment or, or just fun in the flame of disappointment now. <laughs> so it have nobody really, it has there's no incentive to, to, to rise above or to, to, to go the extra mile to be on the because everybody around here just relaxed just like we're fun. so I realized looking at it now that that was um, I don't know if it was done strategically if it was just done right. you know um, it just happened that way but I look back at a lot of things I decisions I made and how I was so driven and continue to be driven is based on a lot of the people that are around me and the success I would have seen From through me. their work ethic now because right. I recognize that we're getting out here just so now. You started putting your effort now. Well, if you get it just so, you, somebody coming back for some kind of pong of flesh. <laughs> you know, somebody coming back for some kind of pong of flesh. Saying, yeah, I got, you, yeah. I got you. And that's the truth because you find a lot of times we we we, we grind and we, we go through paces and, and all of that. And you don't know how things want to turn out. You know, so I guess it's the resilience and knowing that this is what you have. Mm -hmm. You really, there's a mission here. Yeah. But I, I want to find out from you now, being in terms of, I, I didn't even mention you being a dad. The role you play now in your son. Your son is, he's in secondary school now. Yeah, he's 14 now. 14 years? Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. And, and in terms of growing up with your mom, I guess having that nurturing, um, influence on you. Do um, you see any of yourself or your traits coming up in your son now and some of the things that you yourself have learned, are you kind of utilizing it in, in influencing him? In doing oh, most definitely. Well, I mean, I give him full access uh, to my life. Um, my life is an open book from since I was, since he was very small, I always bring him along um, to different things I'm doing, whether it be sports days, uh, trips overseas, certain gigs I would go up for the more children friendly gigs. Right. I'll always take him with me, just myself and him. Um just you know me and and, and small man and, and the thing is, even now as he's getting older and being able to analyze things deeper, he's still very much involved. Um I see a lot of myself in him. I guess the only difference really is that he's not as sport oriented and as as outside of those oriented. I guess he's part of the new generation that can yeah, yeah. be very well relaxed indoors playing a game or talking to somebody on the phone. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that's the only major difference. But as it relates to uh, drive and, 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 and calm in spirit and respect respect something, yeah, he, he, he got a, you know, that, that chip of the old block. 
Right. But... Very respectful, very loving, a very calm, calm young man. And I consider myself to be a very calm person too. I mean, there are moments in the past I would have been upset, um, whether it be business oriented or relationship wise. And you know, I mean, we all humans, you, know, you jump out yourself every now and then and you might, right, right. Uh, you know, say a few things that might be uh, less than complimentary. I use some industrial language, but to say, <laughs> yeah. you know, pick up thing, pelt, fight. Boss feet. That, that's not my style at all, and and, and he not have that too. Yeah. So, good question. Yeah. He is, um, I would say, without a doubt, um, definitely a chip of the old block. However, uh, he is very much into technology, which is something that I guess this generation they're yeah. born into it and it's part of the existence. I just wish he was a little more outdoor oriented. And I think that's important for kids at that age, especially to. Go out and explore oh, yeah. sport and explore the outdoors, you know? Yeah. I try to encourage him and push him and stuff, but, you know, at the end of the day, they tell that it's not really his thing. Yeah, I, I, I must have, I have two kids, and and a lot of times you you want, you you kind of gauge them, or you, you I don't know if it's a judge or if you're, you're kind of assessing them based on what you would have known or what you would have done now. Um, yeah. So you're kind of wanting them, hey, boy, go outside and this and that. I, I feel you. The funny thing is, remember when we were growing up, we didn't have the technology, so we have exactly. to use our imagination now exactly. and and the outdoors to create the entertainment. We literally had to create something out of nothing, but now it is very much packaged. It's it's in 4K, it's clean, it, it, it yeah. not no jokey graphics. It's right there for those kids, it's so a lot easy. of them. Yeah. And then, too, I guess the times, too, back then, it would have been a get. I guess a little safer for a child to be out by themselves all this time of the day. You know, your child down by the savannah, you won't study it. But now we live in a time where a lot of people want to have their eyes on the child. They don't want the child to be out there. Yeah, yeah. To be, you know, exposed to the elements. So a lot of different factors kind of come into play, I realize, that cause, cause children to be more indoors now, especially the urban part of Trinidad. Mm-hmm. If you go down country, children still outside. Yeah. If you go down sea dress now, you go down my arrow now, children outside. But mm-hmm. we talk in city centers. I Most think. people children inside. Inside. It's true. It's true. Yeah. You think um sometimes parents have a um you know, I don't think you should do that. And t- and, and children might lean towards something in the nature. Like your son might I just throw in something out there. He might he might say, Boy, daddy, you know, I really feel and I could be a um a painter mm. and based on i mean our current way of doing things in the arts you know arts in trinidad could be a struggling industry um mm. for yourself coming up i guess your mom being supportive and and putting you out there she never showed any resistance to you wanting to get into media and by extension now you leading into your son's life yeah, so funny enough, uh, she um she initially um I wouldn't say wasn't really supportive. It's just she was always like, "You sure that's what you want to do?" Um, you know, that job really job no set a retirement. You know, you know they old school think about the long term now. Mm-hmm. Um, so she wasn't really too keen initially. But when I explained to her, "This is what I want to do. This is where the passion is at," she eventually gave in, um, gave the support and recognized that. Well, looking back now, that I would have made a name for myself in that field. Mm-hmm. Um, my son would have mentioned he wanted to be a YouTuber and a vlogger and these different things, right? And I had to remind myself, because initially, too, I was like a YouTuber. Like, what the hell is that? I mean, that's a career. <laughs> and then I had to remind myself, just like my mom had to adjust, that, you know what? If this is what I want to do, you give them a support and let them go forward. Because the mistake a lot of us make as parents is that we want to put the child into an area that we think is best, what's best for them or probably something that we wanted to do and we want to live through them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's important to let the child find their passion mm-hmm. and let them maneuver because it's their life, huh? It is. It I is. might, it, sometimes it might not be exactly what you have in store for them, but if that's where their passion is at, I, I, I believe sincerely to pursue it and to support it because my mom did that with me and I, I was able to prove to her that, hey, I, I made something in my name. And, and, and of myself in it, right? Because initially, I telling her she was she was a little concerned. Huh? She, I mean, she, boy. Yeah, she was like, "You sure, mm. you sure, boy? Thing, you sure that's the right route you do?" You see, normal questions our mother will ask, you know. And I told her, "See, yeah, man, this is what I want to do." I, I think um, 
for me, because my son, I guess the YouTube thing and all of that is is a generational thing because we could have never fathom anything like that when we were coming up. No. You know, so because of that, we can't grasp it, you know, but I mean, it's a big thing for them. Um, but at the same time, you're still, you just kind of say, well, boy, you have some more potential here. Why you really want to do that, boy? You go suffer. You're thinking in the back of your mind and by suffocation for you, you know, you know? Yeah. But no, it's, 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 it's an interesting dynamic and we have so many different career paths now mm-hmm. in this modern time. So it's just about, I guess, for us to be engaged, to be connected with the children, to, uh, to listen, mm-hmm. to listen to them and, and to really do some of our own research. Because only when he said he wanted to be a YouTuber and a vlogger, I went and I started to do research and recognize that these vloggers and YouTubers, especially in the big markets where the economy is scale, could create that kind of revenue. Right. Making some big money, people getting paid top dollar to send forward just a tweet or to post something on Instagram. I'm like, where is influencer thing? The friend boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really I mean, I'm an influencer. I know I am, you know, on, on my level, I'm able to, you know, influence. But we're talking to people who actually, that's their full career now. Right. They're just doing um, reviews. Of, of a product, so like the PS5 will come out in a couple of months, and people will just be the first to review it, and they're getting millions of views because mm-hmm. this person reviewing the product and breaking it down from, 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 from A to Z, right? And people tuning in for the analysis. So I said, Wow, what an interesting <laughs> world and an interesting time! It is, but just now, I want to find out from you, um, kind of leading back now into a bit of radio and the show with um yourself and blaze and miles um while you had that stint at, at slam well now even prior to that at um at 96.7 <clears throat> and that eventually turning out to be one of the number one morning shows if not the number one morning show for quite a span um i always wanted to find out and i always said if i got the opportunity i would ask what do you think what you could would if you were to pick out one thing to contribute to the success of that show, what would what would that one thing be to the success of that particular show itself? I think um, I think the ability to make the listener a part of the show, the listener, the listener. To me, when I look at that show. Mm-hmm. It was almost like how Martin was a, a sitcom on TV for years, and then they had different characters like Shanini and this one, right. and that one would come in and, and make the show, give the show a different dimension. So I think the fact that callers uh, felt at ease and, and, and felt they felt part of the show. They are literally people who contributed to the show. So it really wasn't our our oh, doing alone, you know. Yes, we were at the at the main studio on the main board in front of the main microphone. But really and truly, a important element and essence of that show is indeed uh, the callers and the contributors who would come in as characters and who will not break. Like literally, it was like theater on yeah. radio. <laughs> it's true. Where people will come in as a character and they will not even break their character yeah. voice or the character. And we, myself and Blaze, actually introduced that genre of radio to Trina. It never existed before we started the morning show on Red. I agree. You know, with the sugar loops and, 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 and the different people who would call. And people would call in back in the day as a... So, like, Tony from Casting Field or, or, or a, a Suzanne from, from, from Santa Cruz. Right. You yes. know, that is a... We have a Mr. Porter Spain or a Mr. Pinal, which are yeah. the two previews. But we're talking to people calling in as actual characters, yeah. calling in as a personality. Yeah. We made the callers personalities. I, I think that's what I was meaning to say. We the callers became personalities and became part of the show. And that's a major part of, that's a major ingredient to the success. I, I feel good because that to me was what I was thinking as well. I said, apart from the obvious, which is the dynamic, you yourself and well, yourself and Blaze had naturally and it seemed like it was a natural brethren situation so it, it didn't seem like two fellas doing the job it was more like two partners sharing but i think you're right what made that to me great is the fact that these people would call in as characters and it would become part of the show and people looking forward to hearing shilly or they're looking forward to hearing as you say 
um, whoever, you know, um, that was ingenious, I must say, you know, and um, apart from yourself and, and Blaze now, I, I honestly don't know the history of how you all teamed up, because prior to that, you all would have been on, um, I guess it was 90, 98.9, mm. doing your individual thing, but how did that combination come together? That was really Tony Lee and uh, Louis Lee Singh. Um, one day from Brian 967. That's not, let me just. That's not. When they formed, um, when they formed Red 967 FM, mm -hmm. and uh, they were trying to fill the slots, um, you know, I guess I would have had some morning show experience prior to that with Evis and Hill on 90.9. I would have done that shift with her for a couple months or a year or whatever. I'm not sorry about that. Trip. I love me hearing that, right? Yeah, but that's fine. All right, cool. So I think it was um, the the genius of uh, Louis Lee Singh and Tony Lee and those guys would have decided, hey, JW and Bill is probably from 98.9. They would have had some kind of working relationship or at least been around each other before. So we um, combined them for the morning show. So it was myself, Blaze, and Mary Perry. Yes. It was Perry in was in Yeah. Yeah. But it, it didn't come from our doing really. It was just a matter of they teaming us up, um, teaming us up to work together. And I think they would have kind of patterned the success that they would have had, um, Tony Lee and... Um, um, Dale, and Dale Enoch. Dale, Dale, yes. On their, yes. On their particular show, they said, so they probably figure, well, yeah. But that was genius. And now moving from, from building on our whole camaraderie and brethren situation to going to singing soca now. Mm. And linking up with Braxton, who would have been a huge mentor in my in terms of my um, career, because I were, I have a studio into production and all those things, and I was able to. Braxton was a good friend of mine, and you a were, good, great guy, boy. Rest in paradise, Braxton. Great, great guy. And then you were getting into the music, and then eventually finding success with Kitsch and um, yeah. Palance. How that transition was for you, and was Blaze in, inclined, or, or you just kind of pull him along? When Sin Kitts, you know, um, I was doing music before that. I was singing Suka for years before that, you know. And, and oh, sorry, I, like the audio just the audio just dropped. Uh, yeah, you hear me now? Yeah. So I was um I was doing Suka uh, probably since two thousand. I was recording for a lot of years, you know, just putting out something every year, you know, and we. Myself and Blaze in 2006, uh, we had a show to do together in St. Kitts, an awards show, um, the Music Awards or something like that. And we went up to host it and um, the St. Kitts Music Awards. And Blaze was the one who mentioned, hey, we should do our combination together for the carnival. And I was like, yeah, that sounds real good. And that's how it started, really. You know, Blaze um, would have put forward the suggestion. And we went into studio the year after. And uh, did a song called Eat a Food. Oh, um, Julio, Julio did the production and we were able to make Sukamana finals. Um, it was a kind of more gimmick song, a fun song. We had a lot of different theatrics right. on stage with it. And from there we recorded um, the year after 2008. That song never really jumped off. 2009, I think um, nothing really happened that year with us. And 2010, well, balance. And then becoming this, you know, monster, mm -hmm. this new, this modern day classic. It is, yeah. So Blaze was the one that actually suggested that we record together. No, oh. because I um I when I initially heard Palance, and I'm not gonna lie, I personally didn't really like the song, honestly. And I was like, mm. oh, this thing noisy boy, you know. But it I couldn't deny the fact that one, the production was was stellar, and two. It was it was super catchy, you know. It was hooky and and all of that. So I was like, "Yo, these fellas and them onto something," and they just ran after that. Yeah, you know. Um, do you do you still yearn for seeing that now? And we're moving in now to the new era. I guess the new transition, this new chapter in your life, where you have now gone into the realm of politics. Um, do you still yearn for these, <laughs> these past things where you with being on radio and singing and, and all those things? 
Yeah, I mean, not a day, not a day passes by that I don't think about it. Obviously, that is my true love. That is where I've been able to grow and I've been able to come out of my circumstance and take care of my family and myself for all these years. Um, politics really is a matter of, like for me, the political machinery, um, a tool to, to assist people now. Because mm -hmm. I would have been doing it, putting smiles on people's face and making them feel, uh, you know, giving them a feeling. And, and that's what entertainment does. But, you know, as it relates to politics, you're able to really bring about change now that could last for generations now. Right, right. Um, so what happened now, obviously going up for the election and going through the process, um, obviously not getting the seat, but still understanding the, the, the dynamic of it and, and learning it every day. Mm -hmm. It's something I will um, stay involved with as it relates to the community, as it relates to frontline politics. I still have to the verdict on that. Um, my authors yet. I still have to make up my mind whether the next five years, next 10 years, next 15 years, I'll make another run. But right. no regrets. It's been um, a hell of a journey. Um, at no point I ever called myself a politician. Huh? At no point, nobody could ever say in any interview or in any script I would have called myself a politician. I don't... Right. I don't see myself as that. I just see myself as a man who served the people and was going to use that vehicle or utilize that vehicle as a means to bring about change from a community. Oh. That was my, my mindset on it. How much? So I would never say, so I, I wouldn't even say it's a transition really into that. I'm still very much a media person, very much an entertainer, very much a man on the ground. It's yeah. just, I've, I've, I'm brave enough to, to dive into different vehicles to bring about right. that impact I want to see on people. I'm trying to figure out for you now, um, deciding to make that, that, that jump and, and, and go into the realm of um, politics and, and, and to serve. How much of a back and forth in your mind and in your spirit you had to go to say, well, right, yeah, I'm ready to do it? Or was it just a, I could do it and I'll go in? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, no decision like that. You just um, just do it overnight. You know, I sat down, I thought about it, prayed about it, continue to pray about it because I mean, I'm still here. Um, but I'm brave, and I know at the end of the day, I rather take the the dive, and I rather know what would have transpired as opposed to saying no and then wondering what could have been. You know, I, I do like to live like that. Yeah, I feel you. We tend to regret. I said it before. We so much, so much times in life we regret things we would have done. And oh my God, I should not. I should not really go with she, you know. Or I should not really take that job. Or I should not go down the road with them friends. Or I should not. But sometimes you end up regretting things you didn't do it too, you know. Mm -hmm. The opportunity that would have come, or the or the or the you know the thing that you turned down, or the or the person that you probably didn't consider at that point in time, and you recognize that oh shucks, I really would have missed that one there, but. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there are some things definitely that you know, if it's not in like if it's not in tune with your spirit, if it's not in tune with your ideals, I agree, I'm not going through that. Mm -hmm. But service to the people, um, and politics is always something I've discussed with friends. All my personal friends know that when we sit down, I mean, um, as much as we have in discussions about sports and about the different little back and all here, there, and everywhere, the discussion will always go to politics and will get very deep. Yeah. And an opportunity came for me to be involved in the process. And I said, you know what? Instead of staying on the outside and complaining, you know, get in, um, be part of the, the process, be part of the, the, the process of solution. I feel you. The system I, for change, you know? It, 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 to me, it's a, a big jump or a big kind of decision to say, well, you know what? I'm going in there. And then to, you'll be affiliated or associated with a particular entity. You know, so people will always watch and say, oh, well, he's at this or he's at that. And, and personally, and personally, I have no problem with that. You know why? Because if there's one thing nobody can say about me, is that I'm not authentic. My life is an open book. At the end of the day, if you see me, you know what I stand for, you know where I'm from, you know of my relationship status, you know I have a son, you know that I went off a piano. And I'm hiding. It's not about hiding and ducking and weaving and no if somebody on me on me they're not on me that, that that is on them it's not on me i feel i like. i am authentic i live my life as authentic and as open as possible i have something fair i'll check it later 
I'll, I'll check. I'll have something to fail. All right. So I am. Yeah, let me need to answer that. <laughs> no, authentic. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, I am. I keep it real. So if somebody, so my thing is this, right? If if by me being PNM, make somebody change their perspective and change their opinion on me, that's not on me, you know. That's on them. I agree. I agree. That's on them. That because yeah. I I am I am the same person prior to me announcing my run in the elections, nothing changed. Mm. And the reality is, if somebody is um, if they hold a different political view to me. I don't look at them any differently. I give them the same love and respect I would have always given to them because that's their personal choice. Right. I don't have no time to deal with them kind of prejudice. When you could judge somebody based on their political view, the religion, color. I mean, that's the world we live in now and we have to get out of that way of thinking. And if you think in that way, you're part of the problem, you're not part of the solution. I got you. I got you're definitely part of the problem. So you have no... Right to even open your mouth and talk about anything about equality and, and, and injustice when you are the injustice. So <laughs> I have no qualms right. and no shame and no I, I study all that, you know. I say, boy, I want if you know that could stop good my career and that people can watch me differently, then I say, Well, screw it, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. If that's if that's who I support and if that's the party I I I put in for all my life, hey, that is me. And it's not behind you, know, you do you exactly. I feel it. <laughs> yeah. I, I personally couldn't. That's one thing I, I I respect people as you say if you if you're keeping it real or you're authentic this is you you go you go forth and do your thing keep it real though you know yeah. um I try to find out again I, I always like to live in this personality thing because sometimes people just watch other people who achieve and figure kind of watch them as superhuman then. You know, and and not identify that they may have flaws within the, the own character. Um, so I try to pinpoint now things that 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 might be a drawback for you, in terms of do you find yourself um, taking long to, to 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 decide something or procrastinating on on issues? Then um, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I am. Um, I still have to. Be a little sharper when it comes to that. Um, sometimes deadlines, I will know that something is carded for, you know, October the twelfth, and I would wait till October the tenth to probably start to prepare. I still have that unfortunate, um, you know, unfortunate trait. Yeah. Um, obviously, um, what a little is used to in terms of just, you know, being a little more punctual sometimes. Um, I used to sometimes not be as punctual from a radio job. Uh, looking back at it, <laughs> you know, just the early morning thing used to be really, really hard. It still is. Yeah, you know, I can imagine. I can imagine. Call it still is. I mean, I enjoy it, you know, I enjoy it. You know, it's good to get up and early, early and get your stuff done and everything, but it's just mm-hmm. sometimes be tough. Um, yeah, I would have my personal struggles, you know, my little struggles here, there, and, and, and stuff, but I try to identify them and, and, and work, work it out and, and, and deal with it head on, you know? Yeah, the thing with the thing I always you always you mention a couple of times is being brave, and have you had situations where you weren't that brave and you still had to I guess find courage I suppose to to get it done or it's yeah. intimidate you and them kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, um, when I think I even so come on right, that was a situation where I went from being a patron in the crowd to hosting it. While hosting it, wanted to perform in it. Got the opportunity with Blaze in 2007. While performing, I told myself, hey, we have what it takes to go all the way with this. 2010, we won it. So that that in itself takes a certain kind of courage because going into competition, into that arena, into that space with all those big guns in the culture, all those big names, all those people with experience to compete with them on our level as media men. Um, mm-hmm. wasn't easy. I had to really dig deep and, you know, it took a level of courage and strength and being able to also, you know, kind of block all the noise now. Because I realized um, 2010 and now 2020, when I went for the election, when you're in any kind of competition, boy, a lot of noise does come at you, you know. Uh. People who never talked to you once, all of a sudden, it's from dread opinions, you know, and you swear they know you, you know, you swear they holy as a baby, and was your godfather in, in, in the church, you know? Right, right, right. 
and they tend to bring a lot of noise to you. So you start to learn how to block it out because once you're going for anything grand, it doesn't come easy. You know, you have to be able to deal with all the elements that will be coming at you once you position yourself for something of a particular importance now. Um, if you want the calmness and the, the, the quiet and the serenity, I mean, you could just, you know, you, 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 you have to jump into the, right. into the arena. Right. Once you jump into the arena and there's any kind of competition, what is the real peace? Okay. I learned that, I learned, I learned that first, son. <laughs> it's to be patient, it's to be strong. It, it's interesting that you, um, you said the noise because a lot of times people have would form opinions of you. And um, sometimes people who you consider as well, you know what I mean? And those op- opinions could kind of shape your thought. You know, it don't have, it don't have instances where, boy, you really think so, boy, and it had you co- reason to, in, you know, introspect and reflect and see if it, you know, tweak your personality based on what people were sharing. Yeah, 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 definitely, man. I mean, these things, these things really just expose the truth, you know. That's all it does, you know. I mean, even, so you go back to the point of somebody would have had a favorable opinion uh, towards you and then they realize, okay, you have a political affiliation and all of a sudden they don't like you. That is, as I said, that is, you sh- I, I am grateful for those opportunities and those moments because it exposed the truth, it exposed the person to me. Right. That is person really not a genuine person that they could all of a sudden switch their opinion on me right. because of a particular affiliation or a particular position I take. Um, so all these things do it exposes the truth, you know. It gives you a chance to see who are the people in your life who are real. Um, there are people who will step up. There are people who will step back. People who will step away. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just prepares you for when you take other steps in life to know who are the folks to really be part of that journey. Um, and this goes across the border with family, with friends, with colleagues. I mean, it, 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 it is what it is. Anybody is stopping in to any kind of appointment. And I think you see it in times of great success and great failure. Um, because really and truly, it's a solo journey. Yeah? Granted, yes, people will be around, right. but you will not have to uh, bear the, the, the load now, have to carry that load, have to carry that particular crown. Mm-hmm. And sometimes um, you look around, there might be no one. Sometimes you look around, everybody around. And if that particular momentum or position or stature is gone. You look around again, yeah, people talk about it all the time. Right, you see right, it in, right. in, rap, in rap music and all those yeah. big men who catch a big record and like MC Hammer is a perfect example. I mean, he had a massive entourage, things was nice. And when it dried up, people went. I feel you. And it's yeah, true. So, so those are things that really just, you know, it opens your eye and it gives you as an element of truth. I got to. I got in your life. You. I feel you. And it's, it, it, it I, I actually grateful for some of those ex, those experiences though because now you get the filter and you say oh okay all right thanks because otherwise you'd have just been going oh okay you know yeah. um so I, I watch any time and I really want to get into a couple of questions that I ask all my guests right the first is with all the experiences and and the lessons that you would have learned coming up within the years of being a professional in in media and and, and all of that. If you were able to go back in time and speak to the the twenty year old or nineteen year old Jason Williams about to get into his field now, what advice would you share with him, or would you tell him to change anything as he move forward to start the ball rolling? I would tell him to never had to, to never pick up. Um, smoking cigarettes in the clubs while I was, um, you know, that was just a pastime. A pastime for me, you know, being young in the club. I was never a drinker, but, you know, obviously back then people used to smoke in the club. Mm. And I just pick it up as just a cool thing and I end up getting addicted to nicotine, you know? Oh, wow. Um, so that's something that I would have uh, definitely go back and say, Jason, don't even, don't even start that. Hmm. So you, 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 you actually still smoke or, or that was a Thing. Not as much, but yes, yeah, there are moments where I'm frustrated. I will go in the backyard and uh, take a puff. You know, take a puff downhill. <laughs> and actually, I know they hoops, man. Um, per se. I mean, yeah. I have nothing against it and thing, but it's not really my my, my thing. Wow. Um, again, you know, it free up and and, and it's from the earth and you know, to, to, to each their own. And it's you know, healing, healing yeah. 
Yeah, it, in I, I, the <laughs> But for me, I just be kind of, oh, oh, yes, man. Goodness, goodness. I just be kind of, um, it's not my, it's not my, you know, it's not my thing. I like to be, I like to be coherent and to be clear. I got you, I got you. Um, but um, yeah, I would have definitely go back and tell my, my younger self, go start that. <laughs> Never thinking it would have still been part of my journey all this time. I got you. I got you. Um, the last one, um, I call it the playbook, right? And mm. this is your playbook to, to achieving, right? Achieving in whatever you figure deem necessary to achieve, right? So it'll be like step one to two, three, four, five, whatever. What would your playbook be in terms of how you operate to achieve? In terms of just achievements, in terms of Achieve- career or life? Yeah, career to life, yeah. In terms of um, career, just, I keep it specific to career, yeah. Well, I think um, for me, um, I always believe that the story already written, you know. So yes, honestly, yes. Everything, 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 I, everything I do, I know that every day I will turn a page, I will so often I turn a chapter. But I think the story already written. I think my 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 final resting place, my final grand hurrah, my final swan song, my final accomplishment, it, it, it there, it there. And so far, everything would have happened in its rightful place at its rightful time. Because mm. Palance came at the right time, Meet and Blaze came at the right time. Um, you know, getting into radio came at the right time. Coming out of overnight onto prime time came at the right time. Mm. Um, even jumping into this, taking this particular jump into the political arena came at the right time. It happened when I'm 41. So at least if for any reason things didn't really go to, to plan, there's enough time for me to still you were right. maneuver and keep myself afloat within my career and still maneuver that, that will now, as opposed to doing it later on where, you know, you might not really have that particular uh, cushion now, in case it'll work out. I but that the reality, yeah, things can either work out or not work out, and you have to not be afraid of failure. A lot of times we tend to not take the chance or not jump into the unknown because we are afraid to fail, and we have to take failure and take ego out of it. Failure is part of the journey sometimes. Uh, and it's not about losing, it's about lessons. And when you go through that now, you're able to embrace the victory and take it even more serious as opposed to going in the first time sometimes and just getting through now. You know, first time me and Blaze went to Soka Monarch, we came, I think, dead last in yeah. 2007. Yeah. And then we were able to go all the way the um, three years after. So, so you know, I look at certain things um, where, and as they always say, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Mm. And the reality is that um, in terms of my achievements and stuff, I think everything would have happened at the right time, in its time, on time. Beautiful. That's a nice one. I feel you. Yeah, man. I love, I, well, boy, Jason, I want to give you many, many thanks for making the time. I know today mm-hmm. would have been an a interesting day in terms of, well, you know, things going on, football on TV, you know what I mean? So we had to make sure, and you being an avid footballer and football fan, you know, but I really want to give you thanks for, you know, taking the time, sharing your steps with us and, um, you know, influencing somebody who might have been needing a, in need of a little bit of influence. Anytime, brother. Yeah, man. Anytime. Sure. I appreciate a whole lot, man. And, and you know, um, I'm posted um, when the content is out and about and thing, I could always check it out. Definitely, definitely. I'll be sharing with you, man. So, blessings. Yeah, man. I hope you learned something new and you learned and the audience would have learned some stuff about me that probably they would have never known before. So, yeah, I sure. mean, I keep it real. I, 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 I know that will issue there, that whole um, that revelation with the, with the nicotine, it probably shocked you too. A lot of people yeah. don't know that thing. I did not know that. i telling you, I I honestly didn't know you You were even partaking in any kind of. Because I knew you, you was not a drinker and all of that, but. No, no I read, that was a that was a real one. I, I, I smoke, I smoke. I'm not, I mean, I'm not proud of it. It's not something I do in public, so that why a lot of people never really would know. But wow. it's something I'm not ashamed to speak about because I know it have a lot of people struggling with that, and I recognize that it's something I've struggled with for years, and it's something that I will conquer. Yeah, man. You know, I think probably I try to do it naturally, but probably I might have to do the um, it are different things they say it could take to win you off. But I believe it's a mind thing. I think I just have to. Yeah, strength up, strength up the mind, and just go through the withdrawals and just battle it and, and get it over and done with it. Yeah, yeah, man. That is the, again, that is where the, 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 the that is where the real prizes and the, and the struggle. You know what I mean? 
It's true. It's true. Yeah. It's all in mind to her. Exactly. It's in his yeah. uh, Thanks so much. Uh, Jason, one hundred. Really, really appreciate this, my brother. Really, really do. Really do. Bless Respect, you. Respect, man. Every time. Yeah, man. We'll talk soon. Take care.